All right, Lee Seven got it away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. 18. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7. She found a combination. But that would leave someone behind. No? Maybe? Shit. Then there's no other way. Lotus. Oh, we'd leave Lotus behind. Looks like she'd figured it out, though. Man, this is just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot. Well, where the hell did that come from? Looks like she expected that about as much as I did. Without... Uh, if you're not... Look, it'd be bad, alright. For a cop, he sure doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh, yeah. If there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Huh? Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, alright? End of story. Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. Me too. You don't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? <sighs> you're all idiots. Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. That being said, however... However... I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway. Even if we were to leave Lotus. Behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace. I couldn't uh, see exactly what happened, but... I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! What is this? Why? The digital route should be 9! It has to be! Then why? Why isn't it working? Just to see why, why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yeah, that is what I said. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then. I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Shit. If we can't get through the door, we can't get out. The walls are way too high. There's no way in hell we could get to that hole, Seven. Popped out of nine years ago. All we can do is stand here and stare at this door with the nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking. What he was feeling. What he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness, was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant. And we were as one. I was him, and at the same time I was an observer. It started with a tremendous noise, like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. That was when my resonance with him began. My resonant event melted into him, and we became one inside of Junpei. Somehow I found myself in Junpei's mind nine years in the future. What? But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present, and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time. So, so Junpei's been reson resonating with someone from the past. Eventually, it, became, it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. 
However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Come on! Oh my gosh! So it's one of them, then. Over here. There was my brother, Aoi. He was screaming. Oh, so it was her. So Junpei was resonated with June. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. Come on, hurry up. We ran down a long straight hallway and burst into the large hospital room. Damn. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got in a fist fight. A girl watching them began to cry. Oh my gosh! So she's gonna have memories to be able to get saved, right? From doing the future stuff? I wanna go home, she cried. I wanna go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It has been two hours since the nonary game began. We were starting to fall apart. But just when all hope seemed lost, Light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we would call him Snake. His name was Light? Hello, everyone. Yes. Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us. And his voice had authority and dignity. The fights died down, and we gathered around him. I have a little sister. She's very important to me. Right now, she's over on, in Building Q, and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. Damn, look at these. are the nine children from the first go. You know, the girl with the one pigtail looks kind of like uh, Lotus next to, uh, next to Snake. In his hand were nine four-leaf clovers. I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I'm blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is, well, it is difficult. But my sister means a great deal to me, and I hope that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in building Q with clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love, and we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on four-leaf clovers mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you to each have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one, too. Eventually, he was left with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Now, don't ever forget. So long as you have that, we will always be connected. You understand? When he finished, the tension of only a few minutes before was gone. We were calm. After that, we ran around the ship for a while longer and opened several of the numbered doors until we finally found our, a door with the number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with the 9 on, in, on them, and we found them in the chapel. Are we going to get to see what happened to June here? Before long, we all found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside-down funnel. For some reason, this room had another number nine, but this time, it was only the one. But if there, were, if there was only one door, that meant only five people could escape. What are we going to do? There aren't, there aren't any other doors. We began to panic. 
and as if things had not gotten bad enough already. Warning, warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat, emergency incineration has been acknowledged. What? What's happening? What did that thing say? That didn't sound good. My brother always swallowed hard and answered. I think it means this room is gonna burn. Burn. The plaque on the door says incinerator. And that voice said that the, the incineration is about to start and incinerate means to burn. No, help me. Abject terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes were filled with despair. Then, he came through. High up on the wall, a door opened and a man appeared. He was a huge, frightening mountain of a man as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Seven. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. Yeah. The rest happened just like Seven had said it did. The four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We carved through the vent away from the incinerator and slid down into the hall. On the wall opposite the door was a set of double doors. We went through those and began to run up the spiral stairs. As we ran, I led the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother, Aoi, Snake, and Seven. The other children, the ones who'd gone through door nine before us were up ahead. I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran and ran and ran. We leapt across as many stairs as we could and kept running. The stairs spiraled upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps Nona had slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop, but I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they had caught up. That was when I realized. Where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? Oh, I knew I'd had it with me when we passed through the vent. Then, I, then, had I dropped it as we slid out? I had to go back. I had to. But I knew I couldn't tell the others. They would stop me. <clears throat> I was sure of that. I didn't stop to think. I simply moved. I ran to the central hall, the room that connected to all the other areas of the ship, and hid in the shadows. And moments later, I felt a run of wind as they ran past me up the staircase. I waited until they were out of sight, and then I ran. I moved as quietly as I could, down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. I ran into the hallway and locked around, looked around frantically. There it is. It was just where I thought it would be, sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched, snatched it from the floor, but as I ran back toward the stairs in freedom, the incinerator opened. The door to the incinerator opened and a man stepped out. It was Hongo. Kentaro Hongo. Nine years later, we would call him Ace. Uh, how wonderful to see you. You decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. So she was kind of projecting herself as who she was in the future. But I don't think she was really there. Slowly, I began to walk backwards. And then she's gone because she kind of went back. And now I guess we're trying to save her? I don't know. One step, two step, three steps. Then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongo's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. No, I don't want to. Let me go. Please let go of me. I shook my body and flared my arms, trying desperately to get Hongo to let go of me. But I was still only a child. I was no match for a man like Hongo. Stop struggling, goddammit. Do as I tell you. He heaved on my arm, trying to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help me, somebody help me. Then suddenly, Akane. The door to the stairs flew open, and my brother Aoi burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Akane, he cried my name again as he leapt toward Hongo. You came back, I cried out. Ah, you're too late, idiot. 
Hunger threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. Ah! The force of it threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked toward the open number door, number nine door. Hungle stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother, his fists clenched. But those fists never reached Hungle. Hunger glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, but not anything he would consider a human being. Then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. He waved them both over the scanner panel. Two asterisks appeared on the red. He checked the screen, then tossed the bracelets carelessly onto the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all and walked past me as though I were nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later... The double door slid shut as well. Faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran toward the door at the mine. Akane! Akane, are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, frightened voice. Help me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lonely up around the empty room. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door. What? Then started again. I knew it! It's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years. What the hell? What the hell? What are you talking about? It's nine years this, and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something then, you're talking about some sort of fucking experiment. What in God's name are you talking about? You aren't making any sense. I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have the time to explain it right now. I promise. I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... <sighs> Automatic incineration will take place. 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn. What kind of an idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well, God damn it! fine. I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing. How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait. The floor. It's moving. Final puzzle? What else can I say about it, but... What the hell is that? What else could I say, but... Wh what is that? The floor opened and a machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. At least it kind of did. There was a monitor, a keyboard, and a cross-shaped device of some kind. Something about the machine scared me, but I forced myself to walk up to it. I was terrified. Tears poured down my face. I wiped them off even as more took their place and forced myself forward. Finally, I reached it. I looked at the screen. It was blank. What? All I saw was my own frightened face, staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. All I can see on the screen is a reflection of my own face. So this is how she got out, possibly. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei, just calm down, all right? Everything's going to be okay. Uh, man, I wish that thing would just shut up. Automatic incineration will take place in 15 minutes. So they're telepathizing, like they're doing what, what this experiment was supposed to do, and it's changing the past. She's now being able to do this uh, computer thing, possibly. If it's only showing up now, then it's got to be important. But what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Hmm. 
Hey, move. Yeah, hey, we're all tense, lady. That doesn't mean you get to shove people. Okay, it's turned on. This is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure, just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... Well, at least it's on now. What's on the screen, though? What is this? What the hell? Looks like some sort of puzzle. Looks like Sudoku. It's got a bunch of numbers scattered around a 9x9 nine nine grid. The numbers range from 1 to 9. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? Yeah, well, we can hope, right? Alright, puzzle. How do you work? Oh man, that goddamn voice again. Thirteen minutes to solve this thing. Shit, thirteen minutes. Can we really do this? My heart feels, uh, feels like it's gonna pop. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I stared at the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but I had no idea how. My connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any more information from him. I felt the seconds tick by as I stared at the screen completely lost. My cheeks felt hot as tears poured over them. Then I heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Pressed against the window in the entry door was a face, a frightening evil face. Oh, God. It was Hongo. How long had he been watching me? Ah, I don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, really, but I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> his laughter was muffled by the door, but it still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bit my lip and glared at Hongo, struggling to hold back hot tears. You're a terrible person. I hate you. Oh my, how could you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see, I've even left you way out, a way out. A way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stop? What's the point of stopping it? You'll only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not gonna listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you I'm a fair man. If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will, in turn, activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. The verification function of the red. Then I remembered. Before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets into the red. Ah, uh, so you do remember. Right now, there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? I looked down at my left hand. The face on my bracelet showed a five. I ran to the door with a nine on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I hear Hungo's muffled voice from across the room. I already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of a fool are you? Why? Why are you doing this? You can never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. Now start the experiment. Solve the puzzle. I, I can't. I don't know how. Of course you don't. Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenic field and find the solution. I can't. Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. <laughs> it's going to be quite hot in there in a few minutes. I imagine it will be very painful. His horrible laugh echoed across the room, and even after his face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. So does that make Junpei a receiver, too, or what? She's a transmitter, and he's a receiver, right? No, no, she's a receiver, and he's a transmitter. Because she was getting information from him. Yeah. I was crying great gulping sounds broken by hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous weight. So I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the empty monitor. I can't. I can't. I just can't. There's no way. I can't figure this out. 
What was I going to do? I didn't know. I don't know. I didn't even know where to start. Fear scattered my thoughts and all I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating and my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot, so hot, I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. My heart roared in my chest as if it would pound itself to pieces. Damn. I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my hand around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Jumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Help me, Jumpy. Help me. Help me. Help me. Jumpy. 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 Please. Help me. Jumpy. Damn. Akane. Seven. Oh. Wait, did he say seven? I, oh, never mind. Who the hell is Akane? Shut up! Just shut the hell up! Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea, though. Clover's looking at, him, looking at me, and I think Snake may have figured it out. No, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here. Akane! Akane! Can you hear me, Akane? Say something! Fuck! Did something break our connection? I swear I just heard her. Shit! Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy? I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. Damn. <laughs> I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course, but I'd heard it so clearly. Like he was right there. Jumpy! I screamed as loud as I could. Immediately I heard him call back. Akane! Jumpy! That's her. She's there. Then that means... Akane! Are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am. How... how did you know? Now I understand what Santa meant. Right, there's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. I think I get it now. Automatic incineration will take place in seven minutes. <laughs> oh god! Jumpy! We don't have time! As quickly as I could, I told him that... I had to... I, I told him that I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it. And I do. I get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all of this means. I know why the No New Game was held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It was all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god. This is... This is insane. I, I can't believe it, but there's only one possible answer. June is... Zero is Akane Kurashiki. She recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan, I will save her. I will save Akane Kurashiki. I must save her. No matter what. Six minutes. Jumpy? Yeah, I know. Just hang on, alright? I promise. I'll get you out of there. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, alright? Just give me a few minutes. Okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes or not, my heart burned with my feelings for him. Aww. Alright. Time to get to work, Junpei. Is Snake talking to them about something? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Get out of my way! Hey, what are you... Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus. I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more at stake here than your pride. I'll apologize later, alright? Now let's have a look at this thing.
Let's have a look at this thing. We've got numbers all over this grid. Now, if I'm looking at this right, I'm going to need to fill in all the empty squares with the other numbers from 1 to 9, but I can't use the same two numbers in any horizontal or vertical row. The same has to go for the 3x3 three three square with the thick lines around them. That means I need to put different numbers in the horizontal and vertical rows as well as the 3x3 three three spaces. I think that's the rule here. The rule here. Alright, bring it on! I'm gonna do this on my own. With my own mind, I'm gonna solve this problem. Oh my god, it's backwards. What? Oh my gosh. Um... What the frick? It's backwards. Uh... Oh, that's one down, I think. Maybe. Oh, poor Kane. That's really sad, but I'm going to save her. Um, that's six for... Uh, nine. Got two. Um, alright, third row, five, yeah, this is like Sudoku, pretty much. Five, I'm not really good at it, but I'm trying to get through this, hopefully. Five, um, alright, um, so I'm on third row, five, uh, Eight, seven, four. Whew. All right, middle row. Oh, this is gonna be hard. Let's go with uh. uh one. Blank, six, blank. Um. Nine, and we'll do eight. Seven, seven, yeah. Making our way down. Seven Complicatedly hard that you have to do it freaking upside down. Six two. Alright, last row. Three. Nine. Four. Blank, blank, six.
no, no, no. One seven there. Seven one six. And then eight. Cool, cool, cool. Middle row. Two eight. Five nine. Um, all right, final row. Done. That's why she was always sick, because she was projecting herself into our, this this future area. Yes, that's it. Akane, did you get it? Yes, I did it. I solved it. Well, I mean, really, you solved it for me, but I copied everything you did. Now I just have to press enter. Then what the hell are you waiting for? Push it! Okay. I will. I hit the enter key. Emergency shutdown command has been acknowledged. Incineration system has been shut down. <laughs> Jumpy! What's wrong? It worked. It worked. The incinerator shut down. It worked. Tears rolled down my face as I cried out to him, but they were a very, a very different sort of tears. A wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength I'd had left disappeared and I collapsed to the floor. For a while, I just lay there laughing and crying and enjoying being alive. Every time I thought about him, I thought my heart would burst. Phew. <clears throat> I can't quite believe I did that. But I'm so glad. So glad. I, I feel like my heart's on fire. No, I don't have time to be thinking about that kind of shit. I need to tell Akane. Akane! Sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course. That's fine. I wiped the tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. Then I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were t the two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now, well, Seven and Lotus don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to give someone who just saved your lives, guys. Jumpe, are you? Okay. <laughs> Shut it. Right, okay. So maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I haven't pressed the enter key yet? All right, nothing holding me back now. Here goes. Wait. Automatic incineration will take place in 90 seconds. No! It doesn't sound like it's stopping. What the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again, and again, and again. Okay, that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the hell's going on? I've got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. So why the fuck isn't this thing stopping? Automatic incineration will take place in 60 seconds. Wait, of course. That's what these numbers on under the puzzle mean. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8. Snake, Clover, Me, 7, and Lotus. Then, door 9. No, that's it! That number on the door isn't a 9. It's not even a number. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a cue. Holy shit. Of course. Then we just have to put the right number in the, into the right red. And automatic incineration will take place in 30 seconds. Run, guys! Get to the door! Run! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Don't have much time. Man, I sure hope they can just trust me on this. Or we're all fucked. Alright. 
No time to explain. Just go. Quick. Verify your numbers on the red. Verify. Who? What combination? All of us. We all need to verify. Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it. Hurry. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Central gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Oh, thank fucking Christ. No, no time to be happy. Time to go. Hurry. We've only got nine seconds before the door closes. Go, go, go. Come on, guys. Okay, they're all through. Move it, Junpei. Just in time. Oh, I can't believe we made that. And there goes the door. No, don't calm down yet. You're not done. We've still got to find the dead. <laughs> Shit. Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> Man, that guy sure can laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are totally out of energy. I guess Snake probably can't see the sky, but he sure can feel the fresh air. I just want to take a nap. Akane! Akane! Akane, can you hear me? I want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel, but nothing. She was never really there. She, she, she was zero. She caused all this to happen just so we could try it. So Junpei could try and save her by uh, this uh, morphogenic thing. She, she managed to do it. The door opened. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane! Aoi! I cried his name even though my voice was almost gone from screaming and leapt into his arms. Oh, Aoi! Akane! I buried my face in his chest and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. <laughs> They don't look like brother and sister. Like, he looks more like he could be, I guess, Clover's sister. Well, not really, but... She looks more like she could be Snake's sister than his. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. His beat was almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I hadn't felt the warmth of another human body in what had seemed like an eternity. I just wanted to stay there in his arms forever, but I couldn't. The moment I passed through the door, my bracelet had begun to count down to death. I leapt away from him and looked around. The door had already closed. I spotted the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get go to and scan all the bracelets. I left the ones Hongo had dropped on the scanner panel. That was it. I took a deep breath and looked around again. The huge detective who we, we'd call Seven in nine years and Snake, the blind boy, were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide and their mouths hung open. All right, let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Oh, I was right. It was time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise and they nodded. We took off running up the spiraling stairs to freedom. <sighs> up, up, up. Man, these stairs go on forever. But if they can get us out of here, no wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating so hard I can barely hear. 
God, I can't wait to breathe real air again. Huh? Is Seven talking? Ah, uh, we're running too. <laughs> hey, Junpei, can I ask you something? What's up? That door, the one with the nine on it. Why did it open? <clears throat> yeah. All five of us verified our numbers on the red. Two plus... It's 26. That makes our digital root eight. It should have... It shouldn't have opened. It's not like you, J Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? Because you were the person who taught me about the idea of basis. Basis? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base two? Yeah, what are the two numbers in base two? Zero and one. How about base ten? That goes from zero to nine, right? Then how about base sixteen? Zero to F. After nine, it starts to add A and goes from then, there, B, C, D, etc. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. So, what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go way past base 16, all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So I guess you add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16, H 17, I 18, 19, K 20, L is 21, M is 22, 23, 24, 25. Yeah? And what comes after that? Q. 26. 26. And what does that mean? That wasn't a 9 on the door. It was a Q, a fucking lowercase Q. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way, you could say that it was a 9 in base 10, but a Q in base 27. Time for more running. God, my thighs are killing me. I swear, any moment now, I'm gonna tear a muscle. I feel like every single cell of my body is dying for air. Damn, every breath I take is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst, maybe just a short rest. No, can't stop, don't have time. Come on, legs. There can't be many of these steps left. Let's run. Run like a bullet down a rifle barrel. Like a tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant coiled dragon. Finally. Phew. Jesus. I can barely breathe. No, Junpei, no time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost there. Alright, I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Yeah. We're finally here. Please do. Sure, you look like a big heavy door. But you're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Akane. You're gonna open and you're gonna open now. <clears throat> I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Aoi's. He gave it a small, reassuring squeeze. I was so happy I felt like I could melt. My heart was at peace. And not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective, all nine of us who had been kidnapped. They got out. We were finally able to escape from the gigantic. They changed the pass. Damn. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank, it gave a thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. Its last cry echoed out across the ocean, and then it was gone. It's over. It's over, Aoi whispered. Yeah, it was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Was it really? No, that was wrong. That wasn't it at all. I was sure of it. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. This was only a prologue to what would happen in nine years. Yeah, with, uh, with Junpei and, his, and that group. Damn. That's why she was always getting sick, because she was projecting herself. She was never really there. Yes, finally. Air. God. Damn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. Huh? I gotta admit, this doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way. You've gotta be shitting me. What? It can't be. This is... 
they're in a facility they were never going to sink right I mean they're in the middle of a desert what the hell this is the building in the Nevada desert the mock experiment building oh my god this whole time we were in building Q we were never on the ship Sure enough, that's a desert out there with mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. I don't think I've ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? All oh, the bracelets came off. Right, our bracelets. I guess I've never really got a good look at the underside of one of, the, one of these. Let's see what's inside you. Just a little electronic chip, like in an ATM card. That's it. There's nothing else. Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Figures. Akane. Jumpy. <laughs> Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. Damn. So th she literally projected all of this in our heads to save to to sit for us to save them pretty much like the the explosion like the deaths all that stuff and the sh we were never on the ship everything was just like a projection of um this this what they were experimenting on she ended up like um showing signs of it i guess and I managed to save her her life. Damn. That just blew my mind. That was pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this playthrough. I know it was a long one. But um, I had to get through this one at least. Um, before the new one came out. Um, I'm going to be playing through all three of them. But um, I want to do it in order. And in order of... Um, like the chronological of what comes next is the n the newest one, um, which takes place between uh, the second one that came out and this one. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see uh, what goes on there. Um, it's supposed to fill in gaps of what happened in this, in the, the uh, Virtues Last Reward too. So um, we'll you know we'll get, be getting some stuff from that I guess. That was pretty crazy. So. Are you okay? Uh, come on, this is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. You don't look okay. It was just before the end of elementary school. Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill, looking down at the town as the sun slowly set. How does it look then? He was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute first. Aw. You took a beating for her? Um, well, let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> What does that even mean? Jinpei grinned and... Ow, 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 ow. See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't be five eighth, five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. Look at the Nevada desert go past. For an SUV, this thing is a pretty smooth ride. Sure it was nice of someone to leave it for us outside the building. Keys in the ignition and gas in the tank. Almost like it was a present, you know? Anyway, we jumped in and now here we are, screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven and I are all squeezed into the back seat here. I still can't believe we let her drive. Woohoo! This is so fun! This is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around. And there's no speed limit. Hey, Clover, watch those bumps, alright? This car jumps even a little, and I think I'm gonna gonna get crushed to death. Hey, shut it. I can't help it if I'm big. Alright, suck it up. Why don't you drive seven? 
I'm a cop. I ain't gonna break the law. He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. There's no way I'm giving this seat up. <laughs> the guys are smashed in the back and those two are driving. And Clover, there's no need to slow down. The car is Santa and... S the car is Santa and, and Six are in... Should be somewhere down this road ahead of us. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no doubt about it. Then we gotta hurry if we want to catch them, don't we? Sure thing. Oh, shit. God damn it. She doesn't have to drive so fast. Man, I didn't even think a car like this could go this fast. We're sure throwing up a lot of dust. It was a couple hours after we'd run into the junior high student. They'd been hiding in the bushes. On the back of one of the hills, drenching a kitten in gasoline. Oh, that's terrible. The moment we saw what they were doing... Jumpy ran up to them, furious. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Then he jumped on them. He quickly scooped up the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Help me, officer, please. You have to come with me. The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Jumpy sprawled on the ground with a face covered in big swelling lumps. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me, I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth had fallen out. Yeah, I guess I could've. Then why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty? Yeah, that too, but... I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Oh, you mean the bunnies? Yeah, the bunnies. He plucked some grass from the ground and tossed it into the wind. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told them. Then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbits. I couldn't forgive them for that, so... I... Hey, there's still some stuff I don't get. Of course, they probably don't know any more than I do. Like, Ace. Well, I guess I should say Gentaro Hongo. Why did he create the Nornary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? No. Why don't you ask him yourself? Well, yeah, I guess I could. He's still in the trunk, I assume. Yeah, he is. Still tied up, I'm assuming, with his mouth tape shut. Well, might as well have a little chat with the old man. His eyes just look empty. No motion. He looks like he's just given up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him. Hey, were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you weren't, you old bastard. Let's get that tape off your mouth. Come on, I know you were. I know you were. Answer me. You could at least look at me when you talk, man. I... I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought... I, I thought that if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces. By peering into people's minds, you could understand how they were processing the expressions of others. And that's it? Yes, if you want to put it simply. But if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, I can supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness. Uh -huh. I think that's enough out of you, pal. Time for the tape to go back on. Alright, so what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, did you? Well, somebody's a little nosy. Well, my next question doesn't really have, an any have anything to do with you two. This is for Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well, see, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own, hoping I'd catch him when he finally slipped up. During the course of my investigation, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Gordain and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? Mm -mm -mm. Sounds like Hongo has something to say. Alright, fine. I'll let you talk. But you gotta behave. What? Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Mandragora of the family Solencia. 
So yeah, uh, to give you a background on this, apparently there was a um, the mum there was the mummy that was on the Titanic was named Alice. Um, it was um an Egyptian princess or something like that or Egyptian queen, and um, they managed to salvage it um, after the Titanic fell. It got put up for auction a lot, um, and yeah, she's apparently a girl that would not melt at room temperature. Temperature, she was stuck in ice. Um, apparently, he found the coffin, but that's it. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. I used that e extract to create soporol. Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Shit. This is gonna go on forever. Tape's going back on, Hongo. The rest of my questions can wait a bit. For now, I think I'll just enjoy the ride. Here, this is for you. What is this? This is f a for you doll. His name is J Junpei. Junpei pulled something out of his pocket and shoved out his arm toward me. In his hand was a doll made of yarn, small enough to fit in his palm. Jumpy, are you sure it's a, a for you doll? Uh, yeah, the lady at the shop said so. Th that means it's for you, right? I am. Are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? What? That's. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> what sure looks like a voodoo doll? I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea then. Why are you giving me this, anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, uh, well, um, you know, how after June we aren't gonna get to see each other too much? I mean, we're gonna be in different schools, and I just thought I'd, uh, you know, um... Oh, okay, well, how about we call it June, then? Uh, okay. So, so I wanted to give this to you. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. Yes, I head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I give this. It me. So we always together. No, oh, Jumpy. Aw. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. I reached my hand out and picked up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed down my face and fell onto June's tiny yarn body. Oh, Jumpy, I'll never forget you. I promise. Jumpy looked straight into my eyes and said just five words. I'll never forget you either. The sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down toward the horizon. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat bathed in the warm light of evening. Just the two of us leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set, and we still didn't have leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened, and one by one, the lights of the town began to flicker on. There's still one thing I don't get. To be honest, it's the biggest mystery as far as I'm concerned, and also the only one that's really important. It has to do with June and Akane. Nine years ago, she died in the incinerator on the Gigantic, but she's still alive now as June. But how? Was it because I tapped into the morphic field set and saved her nine years ago? Hmm. All right, let's say that makes some kind of insane sense. If I did that, then... How do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake makes sense. He's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. But Seven... He said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of historical discrepancy? Or wait, maybe that's not it at all. There is one other logical explanation. Was what you told me the truth, Seven? You l look satisfied. No, no way. He couldn't. Hey, look over there. There's somebody next to the road. Huh? Whoa. Hmm? Uh oh. Who the hell is that? 
The burning gaze of the Nevada sun pounded down on her head. The desert around her rippled with heat. Standing there on that shimmering plain was a woman, her arm out and her thumb up. It would not be long before Junpei realized who she was. She's got a lotus feel to her. But that's a coffin lady, isn't it? Alice and... She looks kind of like the coffin lady. Yeah, that was it though. <sighs> Apparently the Egyptian lady was there. That was the true ending. Um, I'm not going to bother to get the other ones. I just mainly wanted the true ending. Um, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah. Uh, next game on the list would be Zero Time Dilemma. Um, which we won't play for a bit though, I believe. Because there's two other games that I'm going to be playing first. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and, um, are, are excited for more to come. I might actually put the, put out, like, the first two or three episodes of Zero Time Dilemma once it comes out. But, um, that game, also a really long game, is going to go on hold for a bit, um, until I finish the two games that I want to finish. Um, so, yeah, Zero Time Dilemma will come out when I'm playing uh, Grand Kingdom as well. They will come out like together. But yeah. See you later. Bye bye.